Hi there, this is Cheryl Ann, and in this video I am making um, two snow gnome sun catchers and two Christmas gnome ornaments. And in this video, if you stick towards the end, I will show you how to add charm embellishments to your pieces. So um, this is going to be uh, in some nor uh, normal time and then some fast forward so that it doesn't take forever um, for you to watch. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be um, cutting out my pieces and you see on the side there I have my um, paper pattern cut into pieces which I used as my templates and I used a sharpie on the glass around the edges of the templates um, and I'm cutting out a hat on the larger snow gnome um, sun catcher and you'll see that I uh, am going to cut some relief cuts in this inside corner, uh, inside curve that I'm cutting for the hat. Uh, this allows for me to be able to take little pieces out so that I don't break the corners off the hat. Because as I've said many times before, glass wants to cut straight. So you'll see I put my pliers very close to the scored mark and then I pull out, down, and away from the piece. And that allows me to pull out the material without breaking the little corners of the hat. So I'm going to be um, continuing um, cutting out my little pieces. I have two of each, so I'm going to be cutting four hats and four of each piece that I need. Um, two being large and two being smaller. Don't forget to use your um, cutting oil with your scoring tool because it won't work without it. And I've got other videos that you can watch on cutting glass um, to give you more information about that. In um, my description below and I'll put a link to a video up top for you. So it's the same thing with the smaller pieces it's just you're working tinier so um, you have to be careful not to cut yourself and you know the tinier pieces actually takes longer than the larger pieces. So moving forward, we're going to go a little faster through this. If you want to see more about cutting glass, um, check the link to another video above. Or you can see it in the description below. And we'll move right through this and cut out all of my little pieces. And I'm using um, red glass. And this is like a streaky blue clear transparent glass. It works well with the red, I think. So I'm trying to get as much glass off um, before I do my grinding in the cutting process because you don't want to have to grind too much. And when you're working with little pieces, you see I keep grabbing a cloth and that's so that I can hold the little piece without getting cut and it allows me to hang on to the, the little tiny piece and as I'm breaking the other pieces off of it without getting injured. Because you can, you know, and I have, you know, cut myself with the glass every now and then. And just be careful. So 
we're in January and it's bitter cold in New York. And hope it's warm where you are. So if you haven't tried to s doing um, work with stained glass, um, I suggest you try it. I gotta warn you, it's very um, addictive, and um, at least it was for me. And start, I picked it up and st haven't stopped. So. I strongly suggest you try. Okay, so we're going over to the grinding machine, and this is in real time. And we're just really trying to take off of the uh, the rough edges, make sure that there's no little barbs of glass that you can cut yourself on. And it's to smooth the edges over, and the corners. I don't want them to be, um, you know, pinpoint sharp glass because it'll cut through the the uh, copper foiling tape that we're going to use. And we try to take off as much material to um, remove the marker lines and that will um, bring our glass back down to the pattern size and we try to stay as true to our patterns as we can um, and, in, and and as, as I said before I try and cut off as much as I can in the cutting process but this is fine-tuning it this is just getting it down to the actual pattern and I I go back and forth with my pieces from you know one piece to another like fitting them up so that they fit nicely and so I will go back and forth sometimes cutting uh, trimming off a little bit here and there there where I see it's hitting the other piece or I might take the other piece and trim it to that piece um, so the idea is to get a nice tight fit um, with your pieces before you go and foil them. So we're going through the uh, uh, grinding process rather quickly, you know, taking off all those burrs, smoothing out all the edges, and I have my fingertip guard, and some of those pieces are teensy tiny and they're very difficult to grind. Um, but you just, you know, edge it in there with your finger. I have a finger protector on and um, gently uh, bring the glass to the grinding wheel. Okay, as you can see, I've got all my edges ground, and now I'm going to um, do my paper, my copper foiling. And in this case, because these pieces are so small, I'm not using my table foiler. I'm doing it by hand. And the idea is you want to get the glass in the uh, centered onto the foiling um, tape. So you want the same amount of overlap on both sides of your glass piece and it takes some you know if you do it enough it becomes faster so you want to go overlapping by about a quarter of an inch and then what I do is I smooth my edges down all the way around and I make envelope folds on corners. So meaning I put one side down and then I overlap the other side on top of that and the corners. Sorry I'm off camera a little bit. Um, wasn't intentional, it happens when I'm working. So now I'm burnishing my edges 
and the copper and on inside corners like this you want to warm the copper up before you overlap it because otherwise it will crack and that will show up in your soldering so you need to make sure you don't have any broken um, copper foil tape if you do then you want to go over it with another piece so the I the, the the best way to do it is to just warm it up a little bit and it will eventually um, spread out and will cover the corners without breaking. So you want to burnish your copper foil tape to the glass and that will give you a nice finished look when you go to solder your pieces. And we're going to take this and we're going to go fast forward now. You've seen me do one piece and we'll go fast forward through the rest of it. So if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I appreciate everyone who has um, subscribed to my, my, video, my channel and um, appreciate everyone who watches my videos. And I hope that you enjoy them and they are helpful to you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I try to answer everyone's questions. These pieces are going to be for sale on my website, artbysherylann.com. And um, I have also have patterns up there too for, you know, really inexpensive, like a dollar, to uh, some of my pieces that I do here. And I probably will get this one up um, if time permits. I have a materials list down below in the description if you're interested in any of the materials or the tools that I use. They're all listed below. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, I am an Amazon affiliate. I make a small commission off of um, purchase uh, pe people who purchase um, anything through Amazon when they click on my links. It is at no extra charge to you. It just helps support my um, YouTube channel and my art. So if you do purchase through any of my links, I thank you for that.
So now we're going to get ready to put these babies together and um, you have to use your flux and I'm using 50-50 uh, solder. That's 50 parts of um, lead and 50 parts of whatever else it is. I think it's tin or something. Um, so here I'm just going to tack my pieces together so that they don't move around. And just tacking up some of the connections, the corners. And it makes the piece stable so that I can work on it. As you see, they move around quite easily. Um, the surface that I'm working on right now with the, uh, the underneath the gnome pieces is actually an Armstrong ceiling tile, the opposite side of it. It works rather well for stained glass work. You can, you know, put horseshoe nails into it and, you know, very easily, thumbtacks um, very easily, and it lends itself very uh, nicely to doing stained glass soldering and work. And it protects my countertop. So it's just a tack, that's all it is, and then now we're getting ready to do some actual soldering and some tin work um, on the pieces. First you gotta put your flux down. I'm using a liquid flux, but you can use any kind of flux that you like. I have a paste, fl paste flux I haven't tried yet, but some people use the paste. And you don't need a whole lot, it's just to um, clean the copper. If your solder doesn't stick to your copper, it's because you forgot the flux, because it won't work without it. So here I'm just going to add some um, solder to the edges of the gnome and this is called tinning and it's just rubbing it on it's that simple And when I'm doing my solder work, I basically try to just fill in the cracks, um, the seams. I'm not looking for perfection on my first go round. Um, other people do it a different way. This is just how I work. And you'll see I go over this several times till I get the look that I like. The key to soldering is a light touch and a steady flow, like a steady swipe. If you hesitate, it puts a mark in it. If you, you know, stop, 
you you get a mark in it so the idea is to heat the solder up and then go over it in one smooth stroke at least that's what works for me So we've been working in real time and um, letting you see the process of solder, soldering these pieces. And we're going to switch over to a fast forward just to get through the rest of the soldering and move on to the next step. Now remember, these little pieces, the little guys, they take just as much work as the big guys. And I think they're even more work because they're harder because you're using little tiny pieces. And of course we have to do the edges. Try and get a nice rounded edge on them. I had a little piece of copper in there I had to pick out. Sorry about the length of this video. It's just I wanted to show you from start to finish how I make my snow gnomes and my Christmas gnome ornaments with their embellishments. And the embellishment part is coming up next. My little gnomes look cute as a button, and they're ready really to just hang up the way they are. So here we go. Um, this is how I do my embellishments. First, I'm going to tack on my hanging um, jump ring, which I've got a video on that. Basically, it's just you want to tack it from the front side on each side, flip it over, flux it, and then tack it on the on the back side. 
takes some practice to do that. So these little charms I bought off of Amazon and I'll put a link to them in the description below. And the trick of putting the charms is first you do have to flux it as usual. And it's a matter of tacking the charm to the um, soldering lines of the piece you're adding it to. So in this case I've got four tacks for the large snowflake. I try to have at least three. And the trick is to get enough solder to cover the edge of the charm and making it look like part of the design. In other words, not have a big glob there. And I use my little clay stick to hold my pieces in place because they will move around on you and you really need to have them sit still in order to do this fine solder work. And then you need to smooth the soldering out for a, a nice finish. I always try to use my little beads of solder that fall to the table. I don't like wasting anything. As you can see, it's slow go, but it's well worth the time you put into it. A lot of it is fist fussing over um, getting it to look just right. Now you see I cut off the little loops that come on the charms. I don't use my um, jewelry cutters for that because it'll ruin the tips, but I use regular wire cutters. And then I incorporate that cut into the soldering. You don't want your embellishments to fall off your pieces, so make sure you get those edges. And now I clean up the sides, add a little soldering underneath.
and it's just a tap. You don't want to heat the whole thing up, otherwise the thing will fall off. Just a tap with the soldering iron just to let the material drop. And cleaning up, make sure there's no burrs or blobs. And then again, I go over my lines, make sure everything is um, nice and smooth. I have a rounded bead. go over the piece, make sure there's nothing wrong. And tack up the other side of my jump ring. I have a nice sturdy hanger. Remember it's fine taps because if you hold the a soldering iron on it too long it will fall off on you and you'll have to start over again. Take some practice to do. And that gnome is not done. So let's fast forward. We'll go fa fast forward through the rest of them. Don't forget to hit the like button for me. I'd appreciate it very much. It helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm, so my video will be seen by many more people. So I hope you got something out of this video. I don't think there's too many videos out there that show how to add these embellishments. And they do dress up your pieces quite a bit. They make them rather cute, I, I think. That's my opinion. And the snow gnomes, they can be used all throughout the winter, not just at Christmas time. That's the fun part.
Now in the little gnomes, I left the little ring on the top of the charm. And I'm incorporating that into the solder line. Um, I did that because I just felt that it would add more security to the charm on the smaller piece. When I'm done with this, I take it to the sink. I use Dawn dish detergent and a separate sponge just for glass work. And I scrub it, uh, make sure that there's no um, um, debris or little pieces of solder uh, on the glass and clean it really well scrub it and rinse it and pat it dry and if I'm going to leave them like this with the solder not patinaed I will add a coat of wax and then they'll be ready to go um, ready to be sold This little gnome, I had some trouble with the hanger. It didn't. It kept wanting to fill with solder, and I had to take it off a few times to fix it. As you can see, it filled up with solder, and I had to take it off and. Clean it out, start all over again. Anyway, we did manage to get the hanging piece, hanger, hanger on the last gnome. And the video um, is at an end. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, please put them down in the comment section and I'll answer them for you. And thank you for watching my video.